I just want to be the one you love. Hey guys, it's Mary B bringing you the mayhem and the Star Wars retcons just keep a common. So, so far we've gotten that Palpatine himself was not, in fact, still alive. He was a clone. And then, of course, we have the infamous Raylo kiss that isn't actually a Raylo kiss because it's just a kiss of gratitude and it doesn't mean anything. And now we have a whole nother retcon that we have to break down for you guys. So this one, it comes to us from ScreenRant.com and... It's actually kind of like a retcon of a retcon, so we'll, we'll get into this and I'll break this down for you and then I'll explain to you why it is that this does not work. This does not work. But then again, they never cared what really worked, only what made them think that things might sound a little bit better. So Star Wars confirms Rey's father is a failed Palpatine clone. That's right. Not the son of Palpatine. Palpatine didn't get busy. He instead had a failed clone that's well, well we'll get into that so the star wars the rise of skywalker novelization reveals ray's father is actually a failed palpatine clone one of the biggest and most controversial reveals in the film is that ray is the emperor's granddaughter oh, but this makes her not really his granddaughter though doesn't it this was in the film she's supposed to be his granddaughter but th that's that's not true if she is in fact a, a failed clone's daughter she is not Palpatine's granddaughter. A, a failed clone is not Palpatine's son. It's a failed clone. That doesn't make her his granddaughter. So, uh, descending... Oh, sorry, I love this. I love this. One of the biggest... Uh, or, uh, sorry, reveal, rev, reveals in the film that Rey is, uh, is the Emperor Palpatine's... Emperor's granddaughter. Descending from ultimate evil! While Rise of Skywalker director J.J. Abrams and co-writer Chris Terrio have done their best to explain why this plot twist is compelling. <laughs> Some viewers took issue with how it seemingly retconned, uh, seemingly retconned The Last Jedi stance that Rey came from nowhere. And it did retcon it. It absolutely retconned it. It was a problem. But hey, you know, I don't really have issues with the retconning of The Last Jedi. My biggest issues come in with the fact that you had to retcon The Last Jedi. And, and her parents and the fact that they were nobodies. So The Rise of Skywalker tries to, from a certain point of view... Uh, it's a way around this, but it doesn't work for everyone. You're right, it doesn't work for everyone because it doesn't work. So besides arguably clashing with the themes of, and development of The Last Jedi, Ray Palpatine obviously had huge implications within the larger Star Wars canon. And at the time of The Rise of Skywalker's release, the information presented made it appear as if Palpatine had been intimate with an unknown woman giving birth to a son. So for the past few months, fans have speculated who Ray's grandmother could be. But now it's been confirmed she doesn't have one. So during the scene in the Rise of Skywalker's novelization when Rey is, fight, is feigning taking part in the Sith ritual on Exegol to trick Palpatine right before she passes the lightsaber to Ben, she has visions of her grandfather's past. This passage in the book reveals after Return of the Jedi, Palpatine thrust his consciousness into a clone body, right? Like, they did, they did setting up of clones. Remember? They were Snoke. Snoke was the one who was the clone. They didn't set that up in the actual film itself. Snoke was the clone, not Palpatine. This is a retcon. This does not make sense. You are once again using external media to try to make what it is that you put on screen make any damn sense. And I'm sorry, I'm not buying the book because I just don't care. So however, the transfer was imperfect and members of the Sith Eternal worked tirelessly to engineer uh, to engineer a new vessel for Palpatine's essence. One of these as attempts is described as a useless, powerless failure who was a not quite identical clone. Now, while this body wasn't fit uh, to house Palpatine's power, it was still able to live and eventually became Rey's father. So it became Rey's father. But that does not make her the granddaughter of Palpatine. That makes her the daughter of a clone. And those are two very different things. But again, this is Disney. They like to retcon things. So back in January, Rise of Skywalker editor Marianne Brandon revealed they cut additional Palpatine backstory in an effort to condense the film. That's right. You cut the story in order to tell the story. That is so ridiculous. Uh, so it's possible that this information is what she was referring to. But it's not. It's not what she was referring to because this was never the plan. No. Palpatine was not a clone from get-go. That was not the plan. That's not what they were going to do. This is a retcon. This is them having absolutely no idea how to handle all of the, no all of the backlash against their nonsense. So, 
<laughs> Brandon had mentioned that initially the movie got into more depth into what was keeping Palpatine alive. And it's been confirmed the Rise of Skywalker script included a line about Palpatine being a clone. Bullshit! I call bullshit! So while it's understandable why the Rise of Skywalker creative team would want to keep things moving and economically find a way around the topic of Palpatine's return, that's right, guys. They wanted to keep things moving. Remember that breakneck pace in the Rise of Skywalker? They wanted that! That was what they wanted for the crowd. They wanted to slap everything that would make any of this make sense. Take it out of it, strip it out, leave this bare bones, and just leave you on a breakneck pace through the entire thing. So while it is, of course... Well, it is understandable that the rise of Skywalker creative team of wanting keep things moving forward and economically find a way around the topic of Palpatine's return. A case can be made that it would have been a good idea to include some of this in the film. A case can be made. I would say not just a case. I would say that it was essential for the movie to make any damn sense. So it may have cleared up questions some people had about Palpatine's role in the rise of Skywalker uh, when, when the rise of Skywalker received criticism in some circles for coming across as sudden and tacked on without context of the sequel trilogy his past between return of the jedi and the force awakens could have been fleshed out and should have been fleshed out if you were going to go this route but again as i said this is a retcon this was never the plan and nobody who looks at this thinks that's the case so it'll be interesting if any future no it won't it'll be interesting if any future canons canon materials explore more of ray's father's story what's fascinating is that even though palpatine was extremely disappointed in his not quite identical clone and the body couldn't serve the purpose for which it was built ray's dad was able to leave exegol and lead a life one might have expected palpatine to order the clone be destroyed so that so there could be more here that's right one not only would have expected palpatine to order the clone destroyed uh, it's a given. It's an absolute given. There's no way in hell that Palpatine would have allowed a clone of himself to just run off and do his own thing. So perhaps he envisioned his failed clone fathering a child who could assume the Sith throne. Palpatine was always thinking ahead with his master plans, so that wouldn't be out of the question. But no, here's the thing. It kind of would be out of the question because Palpatine had this knack for foreseeing stuff, right? And since when... Do clones really, are, since when are they able to actually house force powers? It's incredibly rare, like practically impossible. Not one of those things that happens, let alone give birth to prodigy or have prodigy children who are able to harness those force powers and be the strongest, the strongest force wielder or force user in the history of all the things. That's not a thing. It doesn't work like that. So now it's a retcon of a retcon. She's not not only uh, Palpatine's granddaughter now, she's not that. She's the daughter of a failed clone that didn't have powers and for some reason was allowed to leave Exegol and go off on his own little journey. I can see it now. Here you go, son. I'm really proud of you. You've been doing a great job sweeping up all of the rooms lately. Here's 2,000 credits on a spaceship. Fly free, little bird. I'm sorry, that's not happening. Palpatine would have destroyed this clone and would have continued on with the process until he found something that worked. This isn't a thing. This is insane. This is completely nuts, and I, I can't get behind it. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. So keep an eye out, guys. With this novelization coming out, I'm sure we're going bound to get a whole lot more retcons. I'm amused. I'm sitting over here yucking it up like a hooligan. This is hilarious. So anyway, do me a favor, guys. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think about Rey being the daughter of a failed clone that Palpatine just let leave and go live his own life. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will talk to you later. Love, love. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and be sure to hit that bell for notifications so you can know when I put out new content. Thanks so much for watching, guys and I'll see you around.